Alright people, so I'm here with the uh, the Ruthless Ranters weekly news here, the third time I am doing this for, uh, I believe it's April 30th, 2015. Uh, uh, so, um, the first story I want to get into here again, I link all my news stories that I'm covering in the description below, so you could find uh, the links to all these videos or, or, or news stories. So the first story I want to cover here is the whole DEA, the Drug Enforcement Agency thing, you know, with the, she retired the head of it, and there's been the talk of uh, cartel-funded sex parties, and this was re re reported even in Latino.Fox News, so even the Latino Fox News is reporting on this. Uh, and it says, you know, uh, the DEA-funded sex parties date back to Colombia in 2001. So there you go, people. You know, I've been talking about this. I mean, maybe not that much, but I believe I've mentioned it, that how the government ships in the drugs. So it, and they party with the cartels as well, it's, it looks like, with prostitutes. So there you go. I mean, there's been narcotics officers on TV who said, yeah, you know, I'm a narcotics officer or some, some you know, title like that, and we ship in drugs. Rick Ross, one of the biggest drug dealers in the 80s, says he got his drugs from the CIA. So, I mean, it's well known that the government, I mean, there's been stories about how they do it, how we prop up the opium trade in uh, Afghanistan. I mean, we... We, we hold this ridiculous war on drugs, but at the same time, we were the ones shipping them in, in the first place. It's totally criminal, and, you know, they're saying, oh, you know, the DEA-funded sex parties. Well, they should also be talking about how the how uh, we ship in the drugs as well. Number two, I want to go for uh, the next story here. I, I have them numbered on here. So, uh, so n number two, it's the... I, I saw this video online here of this uh, police shooting of a black man. Um, and my question is, why isn't the um, the media and all these people, you know, like they're always quick to go through these cases here of ambiguous evidence where there's not enough evidence, evidence to say, oh, you know, this guy was justified or this guy, you know, this police officer was justified or they pick the cases where the police officer is justified. Why aren't they talking about this one here? And if you click on the YouTube video, you could see it. Basically, the guy's riding on his bike. The police pulls him over. He's kind of trying to get away. He's not really running. Then he kind of goes out of view for a second, and then it appears he's, like, running away. It, it, it looks pretty clear to me that this was uh, an unjustified shooting um, here. But the question is, for me, like... Why, why isn't the media paying more attention to this, people? Why isn't these Black Lives Matter protesters playing, paying more attention to these kind of videos? You know, so, I, you know, just take a look at the video, and I think police brutality, you know, overall, if you look at the, you know, the spectrum of America, you know, where, like, 30,000, 40,000 people die in car accidents every year, this police brutality isn't a big issue by itself, but... Police brutality is part of kind of the militarization of the, of the cops into like a police state. So that's where it really comes into effect, uh, you, you know, because the, the police state, the militarization of cops is a very um, big issue. And it, and it could be used, you know, one, it could be used in part to take this country down or to turn this country into tyranny. So we got to be very cautious of... Uh, you know, the militarized police. Now, now I want to get on to number three here. Apparently there's this Kylie Jenner challenge going on. And you see, people get so obsessed with these things. You know, oh, it's all about the cinnamon challenge. It's all about the Kylie Jenner challenge. It's all about these stupid things that could actually kill, oh, you know, let's plank, you know, and risk our lives over these stupid challenges. You know, it's like, I, I don't get it here. So instead of actually, you know, Reading, reading the Constitution, paying attention to news, uh, you know, promoting good values and shit. People are doing random shit like this. So apparently they want to get their lips looking like Kylie Jenner's by sucking in on something or whatever. And I hear, you know, they, they had a story, I believe, I believe it said it in this one on uh, USA Today, how it could actually permanently give you lip damage. Yeah, you know, so... 
you know, I just don't get it. You know, I, I don't get the attraction here. You know, I, I, you know, I don't know. Um, same thing with the cinnamon challenge. It's like, why would you try something that, you know, you, you could choke on? I, I heard somebody died doing that. Same thing with the ice bucket challenge. I mean, I heard somebody, you know, and it's all right to have some fun. But I mean, like, you know, if you're going to do, do, do these fun things, I mean, I mean, the ice bucket challenge is a fun, fun thing to do and everything. But I mean, um, there's certain things that are just stupid like this one. And, you know, at the same time, there's got to be a balance between, you know, fun things you do and also, you know, good things you do like watching the news, paying attention to the news, uh, you know, being politi politically active. Number four here, I got this story on Bloomberg. So basically a lot of people were asking, you know, I heard Jeb Bush was going to, uh, you know, right by the Bilderberg meetings around when they were taking place. So people asked, you know, is he going to Bilderberg or not? And basically, you know, Bloomberg came out with a uh, article it, it, oh and the campaign manager for uh jeb bush re responded back and in, in a one-word answer and just said no he's not going and that's all he said was no so um you know it's, it's a legitimate question and you know blue you know mainstream media sites like bloomberg are are quick to downplay the the uh the bilderberg group you know it's like this should be gaining major media attention, where 120 of the most powerful, wealthy people in the world meet in secret. There's no media allowed. There's a ton of security. They meet in secret. Why isn't there any media coverage of this? You know, they just say, oh, you know, you're a conspiracy theorist if you think this is a big deal or if you, you know, pay close attention to it. This is, Bilderberg's a major fucking thing. You, you, you should really look into it. And even if you don't, you know, think that these people are, you know, influencing the world in a major way, you have to say that, you know, it's very interesting how 120 people meet in secret every year. That 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 should be fucking top news story right there. But it's no, I, I'm sure most of the population doesn't even know what the Bilderberg fucking you know group is, which is a shame. Just just uh, an example of how mainstream media just demonizes us for just asking questions and, and paying attention to this. Number five, I want to get into the sto this story here on the U.S. is lowering fluoride levels in the water for the first time in 50 years. So um, there's the, there was an article on The Guardian speaking of this. This is, this is great news right here. I mean, it's it's not perfect, but apparently the the levels were 1.2 parts per million. Now they're lowering it to 0. 0.7 parts per million, um, and it's been people like me, uh, in the hundreds of thousands of others probably around, you know, the world and in America, speaking out against the dangers of fluoride, uh, who have uh, caused this to happen. Probably, I mean, there's been a major backlash against the dangers of fluoride. And there, I've show, I, a few months ago, I made a video on two new studies on fl fluoride being linked to negative health effects. And even if it was good, you can't mass medicate a population like this. You know, it's like, you know, like a fucking, you know, there's like fucking different kinds of uh, people in the world. And, you know, you know, I'm not going to have the same, um, you know, I'm not going to need the same level of a medicine that a little kid's going to have or a, you know, a, a, a bigger man my size or a small, you know, you know what I'm trying to say here? You know, it's you, there's not a medicine that's one dose for everybody. And what if there's like a fucking, you know, run, you know, let's say there's a runner out there who drinks a ton of fucking water. I mean, so I'm, I mean, it's totally ludicrous to do this. The government has no business in adding anything to our wa our water supply, and uh, I mean again, it's been linked to, to numerous uh, negative health effects. So, I mean, this is definitely good, and hopefully, we could actually eventually get uh, this uh, fluoride totally out of the water because it's ho it's not good. Number six, 
I want to get to a story here about this CNN news anchor, uh, Brooke Baldwin, I believe her name was, blaming military veterans, uh, saying they are ready to do battle. You know, this is bullshit right here. So she's basically saying, oh, you know, these military people getting back from, you know, Afghanistan and they're, they're ready to do battle. So there you go. I mean, it's just an overthrow of reality almost. I mean, when have you ever heard of a military veteran, you know, doing a major crime or, or anything? I mean, maybe there there's some, you know, people, uh, you know, who the VA um, mishandled and just gave a bunch of pills. Uh, you know, that could certainly happen, but, you know, but th this is just crazy to suggest that the veterans pose l a legitimate problem. Uh, you know, what the real prob problem is, is the government neglecting the veterans after they return home and not giving them proper treatments. That's the real problem. The veterans are not dangerous people. You know, we should not fear the veterans. I mean, this is ridiculous and ludicrous to suggest that they're going to fuck shit up or do battle here in America. Are you kidding me? Um, so, so this is just crazy. Now, now, now I want to get to this Clinton story. Apparently, um, the Clinton Foundation failed to disclose 1,100 foreign donations. You know, oh, just forgot or, you know, messed up, you know, messed up. You know, I hear, oh, it, it was a mistake. You know, I don't, but you know what? There's no evidence, I guess, you could say innocent until in, until proven guilty, and I believe in that. But, I mean, you got to think here that, you know, <laughs> there's, there's a good chance that that's, this is uh, fucking intentional. Uh, you know, I don't, again, innocent until proven guilty, but, I mean, this is def definitely suspicious. And this is, um, you know, something that should be a, a, another top news story. And it, and it kind of is in a lot of news sites, but I mean, it's definitely, you know, they, they just forgot to disclose 1,100 foreign donations. So just wanted to bring that up there. And I mean, we all know Hillary Clinton's, you know, a fucking, you know, we, we all are hoping that she does not get into the White House by any means possible. You know, I want to fucking take her down and hope somebody actually halfway decent, like a Rand Paul or even like a Ted Cruz gets into the White House because they would be a lot better than fucking Hillary Clinton. All right, last story here. I want to talk about Chipotle say, says they're removing GMOs from their food. Uh, and again, it's kind of hard to tell you. Like all these um, uh, restaurants like McDonald's, oh, we're going to have, you know, antibiotic-free chicken or some shit like that. You know, and it's not gonna. You know, they think they're gonna get you know the, the the healthy eaters to eat their food. No, you you're not McDonald's, right? Uh, I I mean the people who are worried about you know add, additives in their food, GMOs, uh, high fructose corn syrup, etc. They all know that McDonald's is a horrible uh, eating establishment, and when they come out, and we know when they come out and say. Oh, you know, our foods are now healthy because we, we've removed this. We all know that's bullshit, and we're not going to eat their McDonald's, all right? And I mean, so when these big corporations are say, Oh, you know, we're removing the aspartame from our Pepsi, or we're removing this, we're removing that. What, you know, you, you've really got to pay attention. Is this legitimate, or is this just to try to get more people to drink their food or, or drink their stuff and eat their food. So, I mean, we got to really pay attention. But even, even if they are, you know, not being legitimate and trying to be more healthy, it's still a, again, it's still a win. Even though the fluoride levels are not down to zero, it's still a win that they're less because it shows that we're making an impact and we, we're having a bigger voice now demanding actually, you know, natural foods, I saw a story, I believe it was on the Boston Globe when I was looking for stories to cover here, talking about how this, how it's so bad now that Kraft Mac and Cheese is, is removing uh, uh, all artificial f like colors and flavorings from their foods because of the food babe. And so, saying, oh, it's so bad. Yeah, it's, you know, yeah, you know, let's just feed our kids garbage and bullshit. You know, let's just feed them artificial crap. 
and junk like that. Let's not eat, you know, healthy, non-GMO, organic, natural foods. You know, uh, how dare people demand that companies actually give them natural foods. I mean, it's just so ridiculous. And people don't even fucking, like, you know, you, like when I go to the grocery store to get food, I, I, I usually look on the back of the product to see the ingredients. I don't see other people doing that. You know, like, I, I like to know what's in my food and what I'm eating. Um, so, yeah, and, and, and what, some people might, might look at me like I'm crazy, but I like to know what I'm eating and what I'm putting into my body. Oh, my God, what a, what a crazy thought. I actually want to know what I'm putting into my body. And people might just look at, you know, they, they have the ingredients in really small letters. But and people all all people will look at if they look at the nutritional label is probably like the amount of fat and protein and sugar and I, and those are pretty much deceiving because I mean there's good kinds of fats, uh and you know like like cholesterol eggs have a ton of fucking cholesterol but it's been shown that you know by eating eggs your cholesterol does not rise, uh, and it's not bad for you. Uh, so I mean. You cannot tell how healthy a food is by just looking at the uh, label. The only thing, you know, that's really good for the label is maybe sugar. But then again, there could be natural sugar. So, I mean, like, like I love honey. Um, so, I mean, there's no, you, you, you can't just look at the nutritional label. But thankfully, there's more of a crowd that's really demanding, you know, actually organic shit and just truly healthy food. So, we're going in the right direction and hopefully they will legit, you know, make more legitimate healthy moves as opposed to trying to say, oh, we're healthy, but they're not really being healthy. Uh, so there you go, people. There's uh, the Ruthless Ranters weekly news for uh, uh, April 30th, 2015. Uh, so there you go, people.